I did not have sexual relations to that one. Well, I'm not I earned everything I got. Change will not come because we wait for some other person. Hello, Internet. This is the Blind Partisan Show with Elliot and this uh, uh, redheaded uh, freak over here. Whoever he is. Yeah, Jacob. I'm sure he has a title card. Uh, I always forget his name. Yeah. He's kind of forgettable. So uh, today we're going to talk about what again? We're talking about voter suppression uh, kind of rolled in with, you know, the midterms and all that because that's been talked about a lot recently, uh, especially with several states doing controversial things with you know taking people off of voter rolls and stuff so give me your like brief definition of voter suppression what do you uh, mean you say voter that? suppression is anyone intentionally making it so someone's ineligible to vote for political gain okay i think that's a pretty fair definition yeah so i think the genesis of this topic was a discussion we were having on facebook and there is this um uh, well, so there, uh, the main thing is the thing that came out was in, I think in North Dakota, right? North Dakota, South Dakota. I don't know. See, the problem is I feel bad for, for confusing that now. There are a bunch of States that are, you could be referencing right now. Well, so this in particular, okay. uh, was very strange because it, it didn't have to do really with ID. It had to do with something that these people have no control over. So, um, some of the Indian tribes in, uh, in, I think in North Dakota, they don't have a physical address. Like the people don't have a street address in mm. terms of like what their ID would show or where their mail goes. So if they have to bring an ID or they have to prove their residency, usually you prove your residency, what, with like a phone bill or, you know, so, which is that even that's hard now. I had a hell of a time when I went to register. What's but, a phone bill? Well, right. They're like, well, don't you get a bill? And I'm like, no, nobody gets bills anymore. They're they're emailed if that, or it's just automated, right? Yeah. So like that's gonna that has to be fixed. That's an antiquated system. And and what does it do? It keeps young people from voting. Because I mean, I'm not that young and I don't have like paper bills coming to my house. Uh, someone I know, it took them like five different attempts to get actually register yeah. for voting that shouldn't happen i i i feel like the people at the uh at the, at the, the the poll knew me and so they kind of let things slide but uh anyway that's not happening in in the this this indian tribe case so the post office only gives them a p.o box so hmm. they don't have a street address and so if your your water bill comes to your p.o box you know how do you prove residency right and that, that, you know, I understand kind of both sides, don't you, about that? Because you don't want people voting twice. No, you don't, even though, you know, it's been proved. That it never that happens. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> no, it does happen. Yeah, it's, but it's very rare. Always lower than the margin of error yeah. of any other kind. Yeah. So it's never, it's never been shown to influence any kind of election. No, but it is something we should still be watching for. We should yeah. be on, you know, lots. Well, so what do you do? So, like, I, I thought that was terrible, but, I, I mean, other than coming up with some new electronic system, like, you know, where you'd have to, you know, be, be you'd have to have a password or something, I, I don't have another solution. I don't know. Um, what's get, really interesting, though, is you brought up this case in one of the yeah. Dakotas, probably. I got to look it up, because I, I think it's North Dakota, but I feel like I should. I have, like, right. four other states I could mention. Yeah. There was the really big case with Alabama where their uh, secretary of state, which why does a state have a secretary of state? Yeah, it was North Dakota. Had a, uh, he like purged 700,000 people from the voting rolls a week before yeah. the deadline. And he's the one of the two candidates running for governor. Yeah. That's not fishy, is it? Uh, there was a v much more recent case in Indiana. Indiana had a big controversy with it like this week. Uh, Texas, a whole bunch of people were Texas. Uh, uh, I'm not going to, I don't know all the details, but Texas, a bunch of people were stripped from voting uh, because they s cited a law saying that in order to vote, we need your handwritten signature on record. And like 25,000 people were stripped from voting. The weird thing is neither Texas or the federal government has a law requiring you to have your handwritten signature anywhere in order to vote. 
Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you know, what should you do? Because you should have to demonstrate. I mean, so so uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, something else that came up uh, was that oh, it's all Republicans that are pushing for this voter suppression stuff. Well, that's true now, yeah. but it was Democrats up until about uh, I think fifteen years ago. I'd say that's fair. Yeah. You know, and you know what? Everyone should be able to vote. Yes. I, I think yes. I think if you're homeless, you should be able to vote. I think if you're a felon, you should be able to yes. vote. I think if you're living in the Cayman Islands away from your home in the United States, you should be able to vote. If you're a United States citizen over the... So you do need to prove residency, though, right? So if you're in the Cayman Islands, should you be able to, to well, vote for so, Wisconsin governor? If, if you've like gotten rid of your citizenship and all that junk, yeah, no, you shouldn't be able to vote. Or but, if you're, you don't but, should, but what should you be able to vote for, though? Like if you if you live in well, I mean, okay. I think our government does an okay job at that already. You know, yeah. People who are able to vote, or sh- well, with the exception of people living in you know like Puerto Rico and stuff, there are a lot of weird rules for who they can and can't yeah. vote for. So okay, so I was I was I've been talking about for years when when Max graduates from high school, if not before, if I can figure out how to get away with it. Um, I want to I want to take this route where it's 70 degrees every day of the year somewhere in the United States. It's like, you know, drive your RV and just go from place to place for, you know, everything I do for the most part, I can I can work remotely. So uh, where would my residence be then? You know, if every week I pack up and move to a new city, where's my residence or do I not get a voice anywhere? Do you still have a home? Um, let's say no, no. Then I don't know. Well, you said homeless people should be able to vote. So where should they be able to vote? Well, uh, I think that would, well, first of all, like if they're, you know, typical residents of an area, you know, if they live full time in New York, you know. But how do you, you know what I'm saying though? Like this is going to be more commonplace where we have, um, like there's a, there's a term for it now, digital nomads, you know, people who work online and they can live anywhere. Should we just say, well, it's too complicated. Let's not even try. I don't know. I don't know, because I don't really have a solution for that. Because if I'm only in Wisconsin one week out of the year, why should I get a voice in who the governor is? Right. So let's be clear, though. Right now, Republicans, not all Republicans, but some Republicans are intentionally... I I don't like to use this word, but I'm going to say it, cheating in the election. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, so I mean, in, in the things you're talking about, where they're um, where they're taking people off the rolls so close to the election, um, I feel like that is. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what the actual legality is, but I think all of us would would agree that that's not good. No, and I don't know what you do about it. I'm always in favor of fewer laws. You know, the minimum number of laws necessary. But, you know, I. Uh, so I don't know. I I feel like um, for the most part. This stuff is not a problem. Most people are not digital nomads. Most people are not homeless. Most people have a driver's license. Um, Even so, in Wisconsin, like when you go to the poll, you have to bring a piece of mail. Like we still make it too hard. We're making it too hard. I can go. I can. I can go to Amazon without ever being a customer, and have something shipped to my house tomorrow. You know, I swear once a long time ago, you and I had a discussion over uh, election days being holidays. Yes. Favor? In favor? So not I, favor. I, you know, because we're so far the other way, I think I am in favor of it. And, I'm, and, I, and I actually, you know, when you see how it ends up in practice, I, I'm actually kind of in favor of having it be... Uh, compulsory where you have to vote it you're legally required if you're a voting age to vote you know what I, I, at first i was going to say but freedom of speech you know and freedom yeah. of expression yeah. but then you know what i think you should be required to vote but you're able to vote for no one if you want yep you can go and you can give them all zeros or you can write in jacob's name you know um and the other no. thing though is that, that uh the the countries that do that and i think australia is one of them they uh, if you're unable to get to a voting place, they make sure that they, that, that you're taken care of. Yeah. Um, so if you're disabled or you're elderly, uh, you know, they'll bring the vote to you. Uh, not only that, uh, even here we have absentee voting. Right. 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 But we've, uh, again, in this election, I don't know the history of it in other elections, but certain states, their uh, amount of absentee ballots that have been made 
you know, rejected saying, oh, this doesn't work. You right. did something wrong. Right. Has been alarmingly high. Well, because it's paper. Well, so, it's because so you know what's funny? Finding so, reasons to reject them because they know which way people are voting this election. So my current project that I'm working with my students in my class at UWGB, the current project we're working on is, this is the intro to computer science class. This is not that hard of a problem. Their job is to validate user input. That's what they're working on right now. Like these are solvable, these are solved problems. Mm -hmm. So why do we not have online voting? Well, I think we discussed this in the last episode too. Yeah. Um, uh, I think security is the biggest concern, but security of what, have, have you know, you, so the thing is if I make a purchase on Amazon, what's the fear there? Not so much my purchase history. I mean, unless I'm, you know, ordering some adult things, right. I get, I guess, um, I don't know what, what would I be embarrassed about, but whatever, fine. Like that, that's not cool for that to leak out. But the, the main thing is credit card numbers, right? That's what we're worried about. Or, you know, our incredibly insecure system that is known as the social security number. That's already out. Yeah. I can guarantee I can probably get. You can multiple. literally calculate what someone's social security well, that's, number is. That is also sequential. True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not that the social security number is not secure. So we got to firmly agree we need we to come up with something else. The social security number. And honestly, people are already used to usernames and passwords. Like they're already used to it. So I know this really has nothing to do with voter suppression or anything, but well, it, that, I've always that been, does. I, I don't know how you feel about this, Mr. Libertarian. Yeah. But I've always been in favor of a national ID card. Well, I don't think we need that. Uh, Amazon doesn't need an, uh, an even a, a universal. Th they they end up with a universal Amazon ID, but it's not used anywhere else. We don't need to have a federalized ID. Um, well, I, every I, other country does. We I, have them. On we are the land of the free. Basis, we are the land of the free. Which is fine, but yeah. we don't have. I think you should get to pick it. State. You should get to pick it. You should get to pick the username and the password. There could be some rules for the password. You should get to pick it. What and if your, and if you screw up and you forget something, you know we go through the normal things like you get emailed, and there there can be a there can be a, a multi-factor authentication. These are things you agree though that that are solved, regardless of if this is done on a state level or a national level. Yeah, social security cards. No, that's useless. That's gone. useless. Those should yeah. be gone. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's useless. It shouldn't be used for anything. See, this is weird. We agree on things. Well, I mean, it, it's already being used to track us. And, and like I could I could probably sign up for something using your social security numbers like that's super scary I mean we know that these are things that happen do you remember that one uh, advertisement for some you know protection service where the guy's like this is my real social security number on this uh, like yeah. truck do you remember that yeah do you know that worked out terribly and the no. guy ended up having to like go into hiding multiple times and stuff oh yeah yeah I mean, it, spooky stuff because it's really scary that we leave our entire lives to what is it like a seven, eight, nine digit number? Well, there's that, and then your, you know your main credit card or debit card, like that. That's just that's numbers. Stuff. That's just numbers, and like you said before, like you can sort of calculate some of those things. It's just a random number, as far as like a bad guy's concerned. So I have a question for you. Yeah. If there's an election, uh -huh. and the election is won by a particular candidate. Right. And it's found out after the fact that there were shenanigans involved. What should happen? Shen shenanigans as far as who, though? Uh, let's say candidate A is his party. One, he won. And it's found out that candidate A's party did a whole bunch of sneaky things and cheated in the election. Let's say they outright went into the databases and changed the numbers. What should happen? Um, so, I mean, that's at the very least election fraud. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we already have laws against that. You know, there are some election fraud laws and whatever the penalties are. Um, you have to, you have to be able to prove this is the thing. Like if, so what if you're saying it, the party did it and the candidate maybe didn't have knowledge of yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. I mean... I don't know. What do you do? Like, I don't think parties should be a thing. And I don't think I should be, if I'm, if I'm running as a Democrat, I don't think I should be responsible for what the other Democrats do. Like, that's not really fair either. So I don't know. Do you feel, I would say nothing should happen to the candidate, but the people that, that did the wrong thing should be penalized. And maybe there should be, the, the, we should get a do over on the election. So something right? I feel really conflicted about is, uh, 
in this country, we are very strict on voter suppression. Yeah. When it's race based. We have had hundreds of cases of going, mm -hmm. uh, you can't do that. That's racially biased. Yeah. And, you know, different things being struck down. North Carolina, I remember, had a huge case where the state was specifically gerrymandered against black people. Mm -hmm. And that was struck down. Right. But gerrymandering for party affiliation right. is okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't have to determine if something is race. So you want it to be the Iowa algorithm. I'm not saying I, I don't know. I'm no, you know, great strategist or, you know. Because if you allow the majority party when it's time to redraw the districts, if you allow them to do it, they're going to do it in their favor. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the only real decent solution is having an open source algorithm that determines it based on criteria that are agreed upon. The problem is the two parties are going to be the ones that agree on it. So they're going to, they're going to number one, shut out third parties. Well, if they, so if there's an opportunity to shut out third parties, they're going to do it. They do it all day long. So, um, but that's better than nothing. So, so we're speaking about this, yeah. uh, three weeks or so roughly yeah. for the midterm election. Yeah. And, you know... Are we doing predictions? Why not? Yeah. So who are we going to do predictions on? Uh, pull up names. Um, what I want to say is, uh, first of all, don't ever trust polls. I think we learned that pretty hard in 2016, right? Uh, don't ever... Wh wh whatever do you mean? <laughs> um, so that's something to point out but i do like to look at polls you know polls are a good metric but you should not you know blindly trust them and what's interesting is recent events and how they've been predicted to affect the election specifically the kavanaugh ordeal yeah uh what was interesting is when the uh ordeal first started generally the polls upticked a lot on the republican side saying that the republicans were the ones who were empowered by that you know they got angry or they got you know oh it's a witch hunt against us or whatever the words would be and we need to vote harder in the election right yeah. but as the uh process went on the nomination uh that reversed generally in polls mm -hmm. and it became a bigger swing forward for the democrats do you see that do you see the kavanaugh thing being a big deal in the election or is the fact that it's done and over with now mean it's not going to be a factor? I don't know. You know? I mean, okay, so um, in terms of, I mean, are we, are we talking the fake news meddling things again? What do you mean? I mean, like, so what part are we trying to, um, I don't know. Are we looping this back into this voter suppression thing or not? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, how do we do that? I mean, I guess right now I'm just trying to figure out, in my mind, what the consensus for people is on how the election's going to go. Because that's always interesting to look at. You this know, term. everyone was show, sure that Hillary would win, right? Yeah. And she didn't. Yeah, I mean, so we don't have a, na a like a big national election. I mean, this is a midterm, right? So you're. But this is our first. So, so we're talking like blue wave, red wave, all that nonsense, right? Yeah. I, you know what, like, so um, it'll be characterized if, if it's uh, a blue wave. I think it'll be. Uh, I think th based on just anecdotal living in the world experience, I'm saying I think it'll be. Um, a slight blue wave, right? I think there will be a higher Democratic turnout than usual for midterm. Yeah. Um, but is that enough? What I think it will be isn't necessarily, because I think the actual numbers of, you know, registered Democrats and at one time are going to be the same. It's the independents. Because yeah, most independents, I think, are pretty sick of the current going ons. I think that's fair. I don't but, know. But they're sick of both parties, too. Yeah. But which one is the face of what everything that's wrong right, right but trump's not on the ballot right no. so like so that's it where is, though 
He is not physically rich and on there. But I know. I know. Most people don't say, I like this candidate more than this candidate in my local area. It's those Republicans did me wrong or those Democrats are, you know, evil. You know, manip- how many like, independents are there really? Uh, a lot of things I've seen are about 40%. Yeah, I don't buy that. No, I think that's fair. I mean, that's including people like you who don't necessarily affiliate, but affiliate with a third party, maybe a little more. Right. But I don't but often also, have, there, you know, like I'm looking secretary of state. There's no libertarian on there. Probably so, people who don't vote, you know, ever. So they're considered independent. Like, who I cares? Don't I don't care about them. So, you know, I, I always wonder about that because and it's a little creepy if we're tracking everybody's votes anyway. Like, you know, federally, like my votes are aggregated somewhere. That's weird. I don't know. But cons- consider this. Uh, we've got a number of factors. One. Yeah. Uh, the Republicans have done all, everything in their power, let's be frank, to make sure they lose this election. Image-wise, they have not been doing a good job. I don't think that matters. Then, uh, <laughs> keep in mind that consistently, yeah. we are seeing increases year over year in the number of young people who vote. That's important. Uh, um increases how percentage wise you know um i mean because it had gone down for many years it had so. but in so the past i would call that more like an equal the past 10 years we've yeah, seen okay. it. so more people in their 20s are voting yeah okay great okay so i'm thinking here's my prediction mm-hmm. i'm thinking that the democrats will end up taking the house but not the senate yeah but that doesn't matter Honestly, to me, it doesn't matter. What matters is the state elections for yeah. governor and the state legislators. Because yeah. Republicans have been running out the clock in the state legislators. Dist- I mean, completely. Mm-hmm. They have won the state legislator overall. You agree, right? There are still some states, granted, that are not. But even in states like Wisconsin, Wisconsin, yeah. we've talked over and over, we are a purple state. Yeah. But if you looked at our current government, mm-hmm. that is so not but true. A lot of that is gerrymandering. Yeah, it's yeah. gerrymandering. Yeah. But how do we go overcome that? It's not by, you know, going to the Supreme Court. We've been doing that for years, you know, trying to get that fixed. Right. The way that's going to be fixed is if there's a big shift. Now, does that mean that the Democrats are going to take but when over? the Democrats take over? They're that's like, well, I was now we're, we're good to go. So now we're going to we're going to make it our in our favor. Like, that doesn't exactly. fix it. That doesn't fix it. Right. I don't know how so, you fix it. I think I think it has to go. That has to be like a federal it has to go to the federal courts and they need to say like and this is going to take a long time. This is like the 50 year plan because um, we need to come up. We need to somebody needs to be able to say. In Iowa, we have facts, and it's proven to be nonpartisan. And therefore, any, any other state is putting their their voters, their citizens, at a disadvantage by suppressing their vote or, or, or their, their wishes or whatever you want to call it, right? So, but that gets hard in states that aren't purple um, because... <laughs> There's this balancing act with government you know when one party gets too big the other one catches up we saw it in 2010 the democrats were running rampant right sure and the republicans ended up having this huge swell against them Mm -hmm. i think that's you know like they mostly screwed up obamacare if they would have if they would have taken more time and done that right that it probably wouldn't happen yeah but we've got you know tons of examples that throughout the past you know 50 60 years I don't see that changing anytime. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. It's not going to change. So the Democrats are going to see a good year. See, I feel like in the age of the internet, we could just outlaw parties. We don't. There's, we don't need parties. What do we need That's parties not for? Happen. I can. I can without a record label, you know, I, I, or or a movie studio. I can go and I can sell my movies. I can sell my music online as an independent artist. So all, every other walk of life, you can be independent, except. As, as something as important as our elected officials. I think that's preposterous. So what should happen to people who are, you know, confirmed you suppress votes? Should there be criminal charges yes. against those people? Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want a bunch of laws, but like, it, I mean, that seems like a pretty clear cut thing. 
if you're if you you've been proven to suppress voters, then you need to be. I, I okay, locked up. I don't like, but like there needs to be some criminal charges. Um, and that's that should like I don't know what what's more of a felony than that. I guess killing somebody's more of a felony, but that's the only thing. You ever see like someone maybe in a video or you know out on the street, and you're like that person is stupid. You ever see someone that you're like I'm deeply concerned about that person. Right? This is a trick question, right? Because I'm yeah. I, I feel like no, I'm no, looking at you that way right is, now. <laughs> think of the worst person you can ever think of. This is another that trick question. Person, is it you? Sure. Okay. That person should have just as much right to vote as you. Ooh. I mean, of course. Yeah. Like that's a fundamental American principle. It should be. It is. It's not followed. It is. Well, it. Uh, this is the so this is sort of the the uh, uh, the push pull of states' rights and federal rights and um, what we consider uh, from a federal level being able to give the smackdown on, right? Um, like I know I understand it. Like even here we have gerrymandering and we have you know states that are messed up that, that are suppressing votes implicitly or explicitly in some cases. I mean Wisconsin, we're a flagship for that. We're the yeah. we are the gerrymandering state right now. Yeah. There are other states with just as bad gerrymandering, but yep. we've been one of the most public cases, you know, our battle up to the Supreme Court, all that. Yeah. Uh, plus, we were one of the big flagship states when it came to the voter ID law requirement. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm not a fan of the voter ID, I, but I, I, I do think that we need to fix this. Gerrymandering. Especially since Wisconsin, it's actually pretty tough to get an ID as a new person getting one. Yeah. Renewing your ID, not that hard, but getting yeah. a new one, you need to bring in. T several different forms right uh you don't get it right away you get a piece of paper right you know it takes weeks for them to ship it when you know which they ridiculous. used to actually print them at the dmv yeah that's ridiculous yeah, yeah. Uh, every piece of that is ridiculous now uh your id info is shipped off to california and they ship your id from california back here yeah yeah all right so are we give them predictions yeah that's that what you're leading into let's let's give some predictions all right so uh you first no Okay, so all right, so, well, so I'll list the, I'll list the the first one, and then you tell me your opinion. I'll give you mine. Okay, fair. Okay, sure. so uh, should we? We'll lead up to governor. Okay, so we'll start down here at uh, uh, our congressional representative right now is Mike Gallagher. Mm -hmm. uh, We've we, had him in our studio. We before. have had him on, uh, and I don't even know how to pronounce the other guy. So you know which one I think is going to win. Uh, it's like Lijo. Uh, Bo Ligio, I think, um, or Ligios. It's kind of no. crazy that I haven't heard a thing about this guy. Because Mike Gallagher's just run a rampant. If you watch any TV at all, he's the only one that I see any ads for. Yeah. Mike Gallagher's going to keep his seat. Yeah. Okay. So that one's easy. So Senator, for, for Senate, we have uh, two females running, which I think is actually really uh, spectacular. Yeah. Um, so what do you think there? I so we have Vukmir. And uh, Tammy Baldwin. Tammy Baldwin's going to keep her seat. You think she's going to keep her seat? Yeah, I do. I agree. Uh, this is fun. Yeah, it's kind of boring. I want to argue about something. All right. Well, All right. give us a controversy. All right. So, um, I mean, these other ones are kind of like Secretary of State. We have Schrader and LaFollette. There are people running for that? Yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't know, whatever. Like, I don't. Come on, give me I, the juicy one. So, I mean, the okay, so is Attorney General juicy? Maybe so. That's Schimmel, who's there now, and Kahl, who um, you know the you know the ads are claiming he's from you know he he didn't never he did, he's never prosecuted anybody. Uh, he's the Democrat, and then there's a Constitution Party candidate, Terry Larson. I want to vote for that person just because uh, I don't know anything about their views, but third parties are always a good thing. Yeah. I, so what's I what's the Constitution so, like? Far right, far left, well, far middle. Ah, uh, I don't. Uh, my understanding is that you would not agree with them because they're gonna, they're they're more strictly constitutionalist, right? So, yeah. so like a stricter interpretation of the constitution. They should still have a chance to win. Hey, I, I don't disagree, yeah. and you know what? Since there's no libertarian, I might be with you on that, even if I disagree with the person. So, so, so the who I'm going to vote for and who we think are going to win are different things, though. Yeah. So, do you think Schimmel keeps his seat? Yeah. Okay. So then the big one is governor, lieutenant governor. Okay. Let's so, talk about so I'm gonna I'm gonna read off the candidates though. Okay. So for governor, 
for the Wisconsin party. I don't even know what the Wisconsin party is. I feel like I have to research that because like, I feel like I should, if they're on the ballot, I should know what they are. It's kind of cheesy that you get to name your party after the state. Well, I, but you know what? I think that, uh, um, I don't know what the platform is, but I think it implies like we're not beholden to other outside national interests. So, I mean, like, I, that, I think that's fine. Um, so that's Arnie ends and there's no candidate for, for the Wisconsin party for a Lieutenant governor. That's not a good sign. Um, well, what you couldn't find a second person to honestly, the only candidate on the list that has any kind of chance uh, of beating the Republican or Democrat is a libertarian mm-hmm. and who we did have on. Yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, so then we have an independent party candidate, Maggie Turnbull and Will Loesch is running as the Lieutenant governor, the green party, Wisconsin green, Michael White and Tiffany Anderson, uh, then we have another Anderson running as Libertarian, who we had on, Phil Anderson and Patrick Baird. Very nice guys. I enjoyed talking with them. Yeah, it was great. Out. Yeah. Uh, then we have Tony Evers and Mandela Barnes on, on the Democratic ticket. And we have Scott Walker and Rebecca Cleefish for the Republicans. All right. So let's talk about that. Yeah. You first. So Evers supposedly is ha- ahead in the polls. Mm-hmm. I th- we, we've learned not to trust polls. Right? I think Walker's going to win. Ooh, yeah. I think Evers is going to win. But so, so you're think, basing that on what? Uh, just gut instinct. I, I think as yeah. are you. You know. Um, I mean, ultimate, I think ultimately that's true, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a very close race. I'm. I I think it has to be because the polls are close, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's funny because like the polls influence the election, and and the election influence you know, polls. You know, it's so weird. Um. I honestly, these, these midterm elections, I am telling you, it boils down to the weather. If we have some kind of crazy snowstorm, mm-hmm. rainstorm, whatever. Cause that's something that's important here in yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. So voter turnout's the most important thing. Yeah. Now, you know, and I think a lack of voter turnout is going to impact the Democrats. The, the less voters we have here, yes. the more likely Scott Walker is to win. Yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because the traditional voters are older. And they're people who are make sure they get out no matter what or already voted absentee. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, like so for that reason, because the weather is a huge variable, which is ridiculous and we could get rid of if we had online voting. But it's a factor. That's how it works. Yep. So I think for that reason alone, I would say Scott Walker's likely to win. Um, Plus, Tony Evers is all over the place on on like his messaging. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. Um, like whether I, he's going to raise taxes or give a tax cut, like he's kind of all over the place. I am like in the opinion right message. now that it honestly doesn't matter what the person's views or personality, image, name, anything. It's the letter behind their name in this election. So you think that people are going to be anti R? Yes. 100%. So the, so the independent voters are going to be anti R? Yes. 100%. I, I just, I don't see it that way. I guess we'll uh, see what happens. Right? Yeah. But I mean, you know, Walker was running against Trump. You know, like I just don't view and yes, I get it. Like Walker had Trump or he had Pence here. Um I think there are a couple of hot button issues that, you know, Scott Walker is on the wrong side of. Like what? Uh marijuana usage. Okay. That is that's also a, on the ballot, by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo. Do you think that's going to pass? I mean, not it doesn't mean anything. It's a referendum. No, but, it's a referendum, so but should, this is the this is the wording. Uh, should cannabis be legalized in Wisconsin for medicinal purposes and regulated in the same manner as other prescription drugs? Yes or no? Obviously, yes. Yeah, but do you, so what do you think? What do you think the, do you think yes will win? Yes. And by what percentage? Uh, this is I, Brown County only. Because First of all, the referendum's very low, you know, controversy, specifically states medical use, you know, right? all that. That's going to win by a high percentage. So... It's going to be a high yes. So, like, what what do you consider to be high? Like 90%? 70%. If, I think if it's below 60%, this never gets taken up as a thing that, that the legislature will do. At minimum. I think it needs to be 75% or higher. It's going to be pretty high, though. Yeah. It's going to be pretty high. Uh, I think you'd be uh. surprised because midterm election, you get a lot of older people and they're, like, they're just That's on the true. wrong side of this. But, okay, um, you voted in previous midterms, right? Yeah. 
How do you feel about this merge term versus others? Do you think there's been more people talking about it? You know, there's no. been more buzz for it at all? No. No. I've heard a lot more about this than I, I think people are um, disenfranchised with politics uh, in a different way than before. I think you're going to, I think we're not going to have a high turnout. I do not believe we're going to have a high turnout. I do mm. not believe we're, we're going to continue this this trend that I'm taking your word for. I haven't heard that 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 younger people have increased. I don't think I, that, I don't I think mean, it's going to increase. I know it's anecdotal, but in my personal circle, I've heard way more about my friends and people I know my age determined dead set to go vote. I try not to base it on before. that though, because I heard I mean, less about it during the 2016 election. Dude, you are on a show that talks politics. Yeah, your, but your friends are different. None of my politics. friends talk politics. Okay. I am not in like one of those weird circles of people, you know, who talk yeah. politics. None of my friends watch. But they're older than they news. were, you know, so as people age, they talk more about it. Maybe. Yeah. Do so, you have any uh, final thoughts about voter suppression, the current election, anything like that? Yeah. So the voter suppression thing, I don't like it. We need to fix it. I think we should have online voting. Online voting does kind of scare me, honestly. No. no. For security reasons. Nah. But I do agree that we need to get rid of any form of voter suppression. Yeah. So, Fun. Yeah. So if anyone disagrees with me, which would be crazy. Uh, you I should. think it's kind of hard to argue. <laughs> I think less people should be able to vote. You know what? In the group, there there are you know staunch Republicans that are like, nope, we, this is a huge problem. We we need to stop people from voting twice. There's no evidence for that. No. Um, so there are people that, that say that, and I th I think that that's just whacked. Uh, anyway, if you'd like to argue with me on that, uh, please go into the Blind Partisan group on Facebook. Uh, we also have. A political radar group on facebook that has lots of cool politics things as well if you're watching this on video click the little bell and subscribe if you're uh, listening to this on your ipod or on your ipod on your iphone ah, it's so terrible i'm so old wow <laughs> go into your podcast app and thumbs it up or uh star it share it uh, please. If you're listening uh, to this on AOL. Yeah. I mean, if you're hearing about this on Facebook, please hit the share button. Uh, I feel like we haven't been getting uh, enough of those lately. And I know we have a lot more uh, viewers and listeners. So just please, you know, hit the share. If you heard this broadcast through your radiola oh, radio. Yeah. yeah. Blip that out. Blip that iPod thing out. <laughs> you could replace it with cave wall drawing or something. <laughs> And with that, we're done. We're done.